Hi there. So in my last video, I showed a fault with the camshaft sensor and the subsequent repair that I carried out due to a little rodent getting in there and chewing through the engine control unit wiring loom. In the video, I briefly mentioned checking a wiring diagram for the camshaft sensor and that it was missing the earth connection on one of the wires. So I thought I would use this video to show the wiring diagram I used, explain how to read the basics of the wiring diagram and how I came to find the fault on the vehicle. Because most diagrams are just a Google search away now, it should hopefully help someone with their vehicle. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I will link it in the top right corner now and also in the description down below. And if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button and click the like button as well. So wiring diagrams can be a bit overwhelming if you've never used one before. There's a lot of new information to learn and remember, and they're not exactly intuitive to read. I'm not going to cover every aspect of wiring diagrams in one video. I think the best way to learn is to have a real world example of a fault that you can see and then reference the wiring diagram against it. So going forward with every diagnostic video I post, I will try and cover the wiring diagram in the video if needed, or break it out into a separate video if there's too much new information to cover or it's dragging the original video out for too long. So let's get to it. What I've done here is stitched two pages of the wiring diagram for the camshaft sensor together in Photoshop. This would actually also be my advice for a real world scenario. With everything on computers nowadays, it makes it harder to follow a diagram over several pages if they are never on the screen at the same time. So print them off, tape them together and follow it that way, especially when you're learning. This way, as you will see when you follow along, you can draw on the diagram, crosswise out that don't apply to your vehicle and even highlight tracks as you're following them along for your circuit. Luckily for us, this particular diagram is quite new and they represent the wiring colours that they are on the vehicle on the diagram itself. Older diagrams, even just a few years ago, are still all black and white which can make it so much harder to follow. So grab that pen, highlight your feeds, earths and signal wires and make your life easier. So let's start with the most overlooked part of any wiring diagram, the key. This shows the abbreviations used on the wiring diagram for electrical components, plug and crimp connections, any notes that you need to be aware of and wire colours. So starting at the bottom of the wiring diagram, we have the track numbers. Each track number relates vertically to the wires above it and we use these to follow the wires that continue on another page or diagram. For example, track number 125 shows the white and yellow wire with a box that has a 157 in it. If we followed the diagram along to the next page, track number 157 would have a white and yellow wire with a box that showed 125 in it on track number 157. Next up we have the chassis ground line. In my example above, I don't actually have any wires that connect to this, but it's basically the chassis of the vehicle which is always connected to the battery earth, and several components usually connect to this. Going up next, we have the star of my previous video, the camshaft sensor. Sensors will always begin with the letter G as their designation, and control units will always have a J as their designation. As we go up, we have the symbol for a connector plug which has a designation T3B. The T stands for terminal housing, the three indicates it is a three position terminal housing, and the B means there are at least two other three pin terminal housings on the vehicle. So each housing has its own designation on the diagram to avoid confusion. For example, if you look at our key, you can see that there are two other three pin plugs shown across the diagram and then the numbers shown just under are the wire and terminal locations in the housing. So let's follow terminal two up and we have the wire thickness and the wire colors shown. The wire thickness is shown in millimeters and the color abbreviations are actually the German abbreviations for the colors. For instance, this wire is brown and yellow, brown in German being brown and yellow being gelb, which again, if we check our color key, we can see there as well. We can also see here a very small asterisk next to the wire thickness. Now, this is what has caught me out more times than anything when following a wiring diagram at work. I don't always see them or I forget to check them on the key. So these are the notes or things to be aware of and these tell us that depending on the vehicle spec and model year, certain wires may not be applicable that are shown on the diagram. 
So for our vehicle, for instance, this is a 2016 model and the asterisk means that this Y is not actually fitted to our vehicle. So going to the right and slightly down, we have the big black dots. These represent a physical connection on the wires, usually a crimp connector or solder from the factory. So these two wires here will be joined somewhere in the loom. Slightly to the left, we have the same black dot, but this intersects through the other wires and continues across the diagram. This means there is no physical connection with these wires and they are not joined in any way. Back up to the top of the diagram, we can see the engine control unit. This is shown with a designation J623. And following that to the right, we can see a large black triangle. This means that the control unit is continued on the next page of the wiring diagram. So that is mainly the basics. And what I will do now is take you through the process I used when investigating the camshaft fault and explain any extras of the wiring diagrams that are relevant as we go along. So starting at our camshaft sensor, Usually the camshaft sensor is a hall sensor and consists of three wires, which we can see here. One is usually a live wire, one is usually an earth, and one is a signal wire back to the engine control unit. We can work out what these are by looking at the diagram. If we look at terminal three and follow it up, we can see that the designation 283 is given to the crimp connection that it shows. Checking the key, we can see this is the earth point connection in the wiring harness. So we know terminal three is the earth for this sensor. However, looking at all three terminals and following them on the diagram, it looks very convoluted and the wires shoot off everywhere and it's hard to follow. So let's simplify the diagram a bit and make it easier to read. Following my own advice, looking at terminal one, when you follow the wire up, we have an asterisk. Checking the key, we can see a single asterisk means up to 2015. So I can delete these wires off my diagram. And if you've printed it out, you can cross it off of that. That's much better. Now, I'm going to follow this advice and check all the asterisks across the whole diagram and delete all the wires that are not shown for a 2015 vehicle. Wow. Now, just taking the time to do that simple thing makes it so much clearer to read. But we are not done yet. Over here, we have a wire coming from pin 28 of the engine control unit, which if we follow, goes to another crimped earth connection, designation 220. This does not connect directly to our camshaft sensor, so let's remove this. Now, looking at the diagram, we have another camshaft sensor shown, G163. Now, even though this is a twin cam engine, visually checking my vehicle, this component is not fitted to it. So let's go crazy and remove that as well. Now that makes another huge improvement. We are finally showing just the three wires coming from our camshaft sensor. For even more clarity, I'm just going to remove all the other wires that are not physically connected through any crimps or connectors to our wires. So taking this back to my original video and diagnosis process, I had a fault code for the camshaft sensor. I pulled up the wiring diagrams and followed them along to this point. This is because the first check, other than a visual inspection of the component itself, was to check the wiring continuity from the engine control unit to the camshaft sensor plug. So all I needed to know at this point was what wires came from the sensor, where they went, and what terminal numbers they corresponded to on the engine control unit. We can see terminal three from the camshaft sensor goes to terminal six of the 60 pin plug on the engine control unit, and this was our earth wire. Terminal one from the camshaft sensor goes to a crimps connection D102 in the wiring loom and up to terminal three of the 60 pin plug of the engine control unit. This wire also spurs off to the fuel pressure sender and intake manifold pressure sensor. So this would indicate it was our live to the component. We can assume this because the signal wire would not be shared with these components. Which leaves terminal two, and that goes to pin 21 of the 60 pin plug on the engine control unit, and this would be our signal wire. And this should make it even more simple to see. Now, 
This is pretty much where the diagnosis ended on my vehicle, because once I removed the scuttle panel to get to the engine control unit, it was clearly obvious that the wires had been chewed through and I needed to repair these wires before continuing. Luckily for me, this cured the fault and the vehicle started and drove lovely. So, a few things to note, even though I had the wiring diagram from the manufacturer, the actual colour shown on the diagram didn't match up with what was on the car. The centre wire, Terminal 2, was a different colour. This is not uncommon, sometimes mistakes are made, wire colours change and they don't always get reflected in the wiring diagrams. So be careful, check and double check and always read the key. I hope this helps someone and thanks for watching.